Hello and welcome to my channel. If you are new here, I'm Barbara Bodger and I create content on studying abroad. In today's video, we are going all the way to Sweden. So this will actually be the first video I'm going to make you know, about Sweden. And the scholarship we are going to talk about is the SI scholarship. That's a Sweden Institute scholarship. This scholarship is suitably suited for people who have work experience most of the scholarships i've been talking about is really for just academics but for this scholarship you need like just like the chevron you need um, work experience so without wasting much time let me tell you how this scholarship works and the programs are for both stem and non-stem you need to apply to get admission to this you need to apply to the school separately and the scholarship separately so you go to Google and you type SI scholarship or the Sweden Institute scholarship. It will be the first link that will pop up. So we click on that and it brings us to their website. The language will be in English and you're applying for an English program. So don't really worry much about the language requirement. So the first thing you need to do is to check if your country is eligible to apply for this scholarship. So it's not for everybody. You need to be a citizen of certain countries to be able to apply for this scholarship. There's Ghana, there's Cameroon, there's Egypt, there's Nigeria. So if you have friends who are from any of these countries, I'll suggest you send this video to them. So once you check and you see that, okay, your country is eligible, then you move forward. This scholarship is repeated every year. So I don't know when you're watching this video. If when you're watching, the deadline is already passed. What I would suggest you to do is put this date on your calendar and add the link to this video on it so that next year or ne the following year, you could apply for the scholarship. What I also normally do is when I see an opportunity that's interesting for me, but the deadline is over, I use a feature in Google called Schedule Send. So I'll send an email to myself and I'll put the date into the future, the day I want the email to be sent to me. So when it's up, it sends to me so I don't lose any opportunity. If you don't know how the Schedule Send works, um, let me know or you just type Google how to Schedule Send an email. It will be very useful for you. So in February, maybe next year, when the application is open, I'll also make a step-by-step -step video on what, how to apply for the scholarship. But now is a good time to start preparing because you prepare your documents. Because once the application opens, the duration is very short. It's like, it's less than a month for it to be closed. So what you have to do is, this is for master's program. And this scholarship targets the SDG goals. So everything that you put in your application should be linked to the SDG goals. If you don't know what the SDG goals are, you just go to Google, you can type SD, SD goals or SDG to pick it up. So these are the 17 um, sustainable development goals. So you just take your time and look at these SDG goals and all your applications should be tailored towards that. So this scholarship is actually, so as I already talked about, you have to be a citizen of one of the 40, 41 countries you should apply for a master's program that is eligible for the SI scholarship. So it's also not every program that you can, when you apply, you're eligible for the scholarship. We also look at the list of programs that you can apply for and you have to pay tuition fee. That is like, um, you are, you are, you are not, um, you are fee paying to be eligible to apply for this scholarship and work experience and leadership experience. So the first thing, these are the key dates, 16th October to 15th January, you can apply for admission. So now, right now that you are watching this video, it's a good time. Immediately you finish watching this video, go and apply for admission and wait for February to apply for this scholarship. For some scholarships, you apply for the scholarship, then you apply to the university. For this, you apply to the university, then you apply for the scholarship. And uh, so the application documents are published. So we are this, that's what we are looking at. We're looking at the documents to prepare ourselves to apply for this scholarship. And between 12th and 28th February, we can start applying. 21st March, you will know if you got admission to your university or not. And 25th February, you will know when, if you got admission to this scholarship or not. So what does this scholarship enter? This is a fully funded scholarship. It covers your tuition fee and you get this as a monthly stipend. 
we can check how much this is it's always interesting to check how much these amounts are to Ghana cities you can also check in your home country and let me know in the comment section how much you enter this is like 12,000 that's almost 14,000 Ghanaian cities per month which I think is really good you also have to check the living experiences, but I think this should be enough to cover everything. You get insurance against illness. And you get a travel grant, so it also covers um, money to move from your country to Sweden. You get a member. So this is, really, this is like fully funded. You get everything covered. So if you additional grants for family members, so if you are coming with a family, you will not cover that. You have to pay application fee. When you're applying for this scholarship, you do not need to pay anything, but you have to pay application fee to get admission to university. So we figured out the criteria. You have citizenship, the masters you're applying for university admission and your previous work experience and leadership experience. So we will look at the eligible programs, program that you would apply to. So this is step three. So the, the first step is to check that you're eligible for the program. The second step is to, um, I don't remember the second step. Yeah, the second step is to check your eligibility. And now this is step three, so identify the program you want to apply for. So you click on this link to see the programs. I'm going to show, ideally I would advise that you go through all the programs. It might be a lot of work but it's good you do that just to be sure that you don't miss anything but this is what you do for first approximation so i'm st i studied civil engineering so i'll type civil okay so i know that so you go to the search button civil so i know lulia and of technology they have a program in civil for me i know kth there's a program for civil and i know kta royal institute okay so they are just to kt royal institute okay what i also do is okay i've done civil i also do engineering maybe there's something that i missed i'll do engineering so i've seen civil and okay so we see environmental engineering civil engineer also do environmental and sustainable infrastructure so if i had done only civil i would have missed this program then molecular science and engineering i don't think i can do this electric power no but engineering mechanics maybe i can do this so i also check this university and this program engineering mechanics to be sure i can do that and um, there's vehicle engineering it looks like mechanical engineering so like if you are doing mechanical you just do vehicle mechanical you will lose this vehicle engineering so you need to just take maybe engineering design maybe we might be something that might be interested in so i'll just copy this and check sustainable so you see there are there are a lot of opportunities there's ai there's biomedical there's computer science like you need to take your time and look at the programs and see which one works for you so let's say i have taken lulia university and i've done master civil engineering because that's what i'm interested in i want to see what that program entails so i'll click on the first link and it will bring me to this portal if the language is not in English, you can just click here to change it to Sweden. Or you can use Google Translate. You just download Google Translate to translate the page for you. So as I said in the beginning, this scholarship is linked to SDG. So for this program, this is the SDG goals that is going to cover industry, innovation, infrastructure, sustainable cities and communities, res responsible consumption and production. So I'll take my time and I'll look what the program entails. If there's anything that would be of interest to me, I will do that. So for this program, you also do a six month internship, which I think is really nice. So now I've, I've, I've selected the university I want to apply. I know what I want to do. Then now I have to apply for admission to do that. Um, are managed by okay have paid application fee be admitted unconditionally and all those things so this is good i will show you where to apply for the admission it is down so now when you are you need a, a work experience however i do not have to be employed at the time of application so which is good 
So this is a, a requirement based on your current use. So leadership experience is also a very big deal in this scholarship. So the work you've done, you need to show, you need to talk about how you've shown leadership. And as I said, everything should be linked to the SDG goals. This is a secret for winning this scholarship. Your SDG goals, everything you talk about should be aligned to your SDG goals. So this is the how to apply I talked about. So if you want to apply, you apply for the master's, then you apply for the scholarship. So to apply for the master's program, you have to just click on this and you will apply. It will You open the portal, then you apply. Let me know in the comment section. I can take you through the step-by-step -step application process. And for this scholarship, you need their, their, they've already offered their templates that you have to use for this scholarship. You don't use your own template. That is why it's very always important that when you're applying for scholarships, you read the program website to know their requirements. Sometimes you don't get a scholarship not because you're not good enough, but just because you missed the requirements. You didn't take your time to read what they are asking you for. So for your CV, this is a template you use. Your proof of work and leadership experience, you use their template. Your reference letter, you will download this template and give it to your reference to fill. And you need to show your passport or your ID and your motivation. So this will be asked in your application. You'll be asked to write your motivation to apply for the scholarship and application portal. When you're writing this, please let it be linked to the SDG goal. So, and the good thing is that when you're applying, you can apply for four eligible master's program on the portal so four different programs you can apply for that which is good because if you apply for four programs you just still pay one application fee and the application fee is 900 sec one application fee per semester students pay one application fee for each semester they submit an application it doesn't matter how many courses or programs you've applied to in that semester or if you apply to different admission one time, you pay nine just one time, so which is good. So try and apply for as many programs because you don't know which one you'll be best suited for for the scholarship. So yeah. So this is it for the scholarships. Always use their template. So I'm going to show you like the template for the CV. This is how the template for the CV is. This is the template. Please and please again, when you're applying, so this is the instructions. You may not alter the format of the template. You don't change anything. All you have to do is to delete headings or entries you do not need. So let's say you don't need maybe a work experience. You just want to talk about just one experience. You just have to delete the other ones. So you just click and delete these ones. Shift cells up. Okay. Then you continue that is it you don't change anything so here then you bring everything up to make it look nicer okay don't delete any heading okay why do, doesn't it want to delete shit cells up okay i don't know what's happening here let me see delete cells Delete entire row. Okay. I don't know why that one didn't work, but yeah. Delete entire row. And let it look nicer and continue like that. You just delete sections that do not work for you. So that is it. And for a CV, how to put in your experience and all those things. I've talked about it on my channel. Take Use action verbs. So CV. This video will help you to know like how to put your experience and all those things. So I also have a lot of scholarship videos. So if you want to apply for any scholarship, just type scholarship. And other scholarship videos I've made will pop up. So I'm rooting for you and I'm wishing you all the best. Till we meet again here for me again. Bye.